Coming up, curing the opioid crisis. Chris Christie is tapped to lead the fight against addiction in America. The latest as the epidemic reaches new heights. We'll take a look next. She's getting what she deserves. No one said that. No one said that about someone who had cancer. Yet somehow, if it's heroin or cocaine or alcohol, we say, well, they decided they're getting what they deserved. I'm pro-life. And I think that if you're pro-life, that means you gotta be pro-life for the whole life, not just for the nine months they're in the womb. The 16-year-old teenage girl on the floor of the county lockup addicted to heroin, I'm pro-life for her too. That was a powerful speech. It was New, York, New Jersey Governor Chris Christie on the presidential campaign trail, remember, talking in personal terms about the way that the country treats addiction in America. President Trump is now tapping Chris Christie to chair a commission devoted to combating the nation's opioid epidemic, and it is an epidemic. In 2015, more than 52,000 Americans died of drug overdoses, nearly two-thirds of which were linked to opioids. Joining us right now is BioCorrect's founder and CEO, Brady Granier. The the company has developed a unique tool to deliver naltrexone, a drug that helps treat addiction by blocking the cravings that addicts experience. Brady, it's good to have you on the program. Welcome. Thank you, Thank you so much for joining us. Characterize the problem. Well, it's, that, that'll take more time than we have today, but it's a massive problem. There's a few reasons for it. There's a huge influx of black tar heroin from the um, southern border right now, which is adding to the problem. Uh, there was a big pain movement. Uh, a few years ago when doctors were over, over prescribing to treat pain as a sixth uh, vital sign and that's been pulled back and restrictions are out uh, are being placed on opioid prescriptions and now it's driving people to the cheaper street heroin. So what does this drug do? Trexone? Uh, Naltrexone? Uh, Naltrexone. Naltrexone has been around since the 60s. It was FDA approved in 1985 originally in a pill form for opioid abuse and what it does is it blocks the receptors in the brain that uh, the, the same receptors that opioids attach to to give you that high. So it actually has a stronger affinity for those receptors. So as long as you have therapeutic levels of naltrexone in your system, you can't overdose and you can't get high, as long as you have therapeutic levels. People know it by the name Narcan, right? No, that's, is Narcan is naloxone, and that's okay. a cousin of naltrexone. Okay. Okay. That's a shorter acting. That's the antidote. If someone's overdosed, they inject them or give them the nasal spray, okay. they wake up from the dead, literally. They're not very happy about it, but that's what you're hearing a lot about right now with you know, first responders, even librarians now carrying Narcan around. It's, hmm. The problem's so widespread. Brady, wh where is this problem, and how does a company like yours reach it. It used to be in the 80s and 90s that a lot of our uh, core uh, drug problems were in inner cities and now we're seeing it more in rural areas. And to tell us about how you're getting out to people who, who are good, suffering. Yeah, good question. Addiction. I mean, you, you know, the problem with addiction treatment is it's hard to get treatment. You have to go to the coast, you know, Florida, Southern California, and these high-end places, and it's not readily accessible. I mean, what really needs to happen is addiction treatment needs to, needs to start in the ER. Because what happens is when an addict is ready for treatment, and if they can't get access right now, you lose them. It's, this is unlike any other disease process where people seek treatment and do anything to get treated. If you have cancer, you're going to do everything in your power to get treated. Right. But addiction, you have these windows of opportunity sometimes, and if you can't get immediate treatment, that's a problem, and then they're you lose them, and I mean, it's, I've seen it happen Have a million you, times. You, I mean, you're a nurse. You've seen this up, up front, and, and, and so yeah. you, you've actually lost people. No, I, well, I, I haven't, well, not personally you've in my family, it. but no, yes, no. yes, I worked in the ER too many, many years ago, and, and, um, and it, it, no trexone was around back then, and I never heard of it because it was just a, it was, no one promoted it. It was a generic drug, and it was, uh, people were non-compliant in the pill form cut to um, sustain release naltrexone products, and that is going to be, in my opinion, the holy grail of addiction treatment in the future. Wow. You know, two things. This is something that strikes close to me. I had a nephew who died from one of these overdoses, and frankly, people look at addiction all wrong, in my opinion. They basically have an image in their mind. This was a grade A government perspective, incredible kid, and he started with a bad knee, and prescription drugs, play, they, they, they pave a pathway to a lot of addictions, wow. he was oversubscribed, and the question is, overprescribed, what can we do as a nation behind Christie and others to save these fabulous kids who are getting who are getting addicted and therefore overdosing on these kind of things? Yeah, that's, I'd, love, I'd love the opportunity to meet with those uh, individuals and talk about those issues. I mean, treatment's one end, we're on the treatment end, but we have to stop 
we have to put ourselves out of business. Our yeah. mission should Before be to put ourselves getting that out of business. Point, yeah. And that's education with the youth. Uh, there's great organizations such as Natural High that are educating kids in school about natural highs. I, I just want to add one thing, though. Uh, the fallout from this is that people who really need opioids, particularly cancer patients, it has become incredibly difficult to get them. People have to jump through hoops who need the pain management. Yeah. And they the doctors, to, and the doc you can have access, but these are people who are in chronic, debilitating yes. pain. Agreed. And they can't get their hands on war. drugs, I mean, and they withhold the drugs as well. Doctors withhold opioids. Well, they're scared. Patients. They're scared. They were. They're, they're being. Vil you know, they're villains now for causing being a part of the problem. And now, wow. you know, they, it's a challenge. It is a challenge, and it is an epidemic. Brady, thank you so much for talking about it this morning with us.